on today's video, I wanted to talk about selling bikes and regretting it. I'm on a bike that I sold that I regretted. I regretted selling this one so much that I actually bought it back. So on today's video, that's exactly what I'm talking about. A bike that I sold and regretted so much that I actually bought it back. Last year, I don't know, around, was it probably like uh, September, something like that? I was at work on lunch break and I'm just farting around on, uh, on Facebook and I was uh, looking at motorcycles. So I figured I'd jump over to Craigslist and look at some bikes and see what the heck is for sale here locally. And the local Honda dealership had an ad on there. They had a Honda CRF 300L uh, on their showroom floor for sale for, what are they going for, like 6,500 bucks or whatever the heck they are? I don't know. Um, anyways, I had one for sale and I got to looking at that thing. And uh, my plans for this bike was to kind of deck it all out and get it ready to do some kind of uh, dirt road exploring up north from here. So I went around and uh, I ordered a whole bunch of stuff for this. You know, I got my little windshield. I got uh, the T-Rex racing crash bars, the T-Rex racing uh, skid plate, T-Rex racing uh, luggage carrier on the back. So I got it all set up to go uh, do some exploring on some dirt roads nothing too hairy i'm not going to do any single track and stuff but i just wanted something that i can just uh you know make it from point a to point b uh in the indirect route if you will so i got to looking at that uh 300 l and um i started thinking you know that would probably be a much better better suited motorcycle for me to do those kind of things so you know how it goes you're looking at bikes and you can talk yourself into into pretty much anything you can come up with a thousand and one excuses why you'd rather buy another bike and all of a sudden the one that you're on is not good enough for your purposes that you uh that you intend to use it for so that's kind of what i did i talked myself into taking this little monkey down there to the honda dealership and trading it in on that crf 300l I was kind of putting myself under a little bit of pressure to trade this bike for that one because I know those Honda, those little dual sports that Honda makes are extremely hard to come by. I mean, I'd never even seen one at my dealership before. i have seen a, a 250 Rally, a CRF 2, 250 Rally quite some years ago when they had one, and I thought it was a cool bike. I uh, didn't buy it. I wasn't really, you know, my mind wasn't even on dual sports at that time, but having built this little monkey up uh, to kind of do some dual sports stuff, uh, was on my mind at the time when this little CRF 300L came across Craigslist. So anyways, I went down to the dealership and I looked at it and I sat on it and I was like, man, that's a, that's a pretty tall bike because they are, the dual sports pretty tall, but it's not much bigger than the XT250 that I rode in the MSF course. Um, so I got to thinking about it and I considered it, um, for a day. I went home and thought about it thought about it at work the next day and then the next day I went down there and said hey okay you I'd, I'd like to get this bike uh, but uh, I'd like to trade in my monkey on it so they had me go grab my monkey and I brought it in and they gave me a really good deal uh, when I traded it in considering you know I know that you can get these monkeys for what three grand something like that on a private sale and that's about as much as you're gonna get unfortunately but so I ended up trading this little monkey um, in on that CRF 300 um, and I immediately was having second thoughts on it. But when I rode that CRF 300, I loved it because it felt like just a big giant Grom and I really missed my Grom. So, and they, they really did feel the same, the way they handled and everything. I know some of you guys might not be able to make that connection between you know a dual sport and a Grom, but I did. Um, so I immediately started having regrets about trading this bike in. So every once in a while, I would drive by the Honda dealership and I would kind of glance in the window and I'd notice that this monkey was still sitting in there. And you know what they wanted? They wanted like uh, 4,200 bucks for this thing, you know, which is kind of spendy for a, a, a used monkey, but granted it's only got, you know, it had 1,200 miles on it when I traded it in. Not to mention it's, you know, probably another, gosh, what was that? probably nine, 900, 1,200 bucks worth of, worth of add-ons that I put on it. Cause I got the uh, the Takagawa exhaust 
which you probably can't hear, but maybe you can. I don't know. Anyways, so I got the exhaust and all the crash guards and all the all the good stuff from T Rex Racing um, on the bike, and so what they were asking for was a pretty fair price. But I drive by the dealership every other week or so, and the monkey would still be sitting in there. Still be sitting in the showroom. They'd put it out front sometimes to kind of advertise it, and nobody bought it. So the question is like, why the heck isn't anybody buying that bike? So about a couple months ago, I don't know how long it's been. <laughs> it was during the winter time. I know that much. I decided to uh, wander back into the Honda dealership just to see what they had. Yeah, right. <laughs> I was just in there looking, honey. Just looking. Sure. But I wandered back in there and I was like, uh, hey, uh, nobody bought this monkey yet? And they're like, nope, don't know why. A couple of people looked at it, but they, uh, they just passed on it. And even the, the salesman was kind of curious about it too, because he, uh, he hardly ever gets monkeys in there. So, you know, just having one on the showroom floor is a pretty rare thing. And well, the monkey still sat there for like four months. Maybe now you can hear it. <laughs> Pretty cool, huh? So anyways, where was I? Ooh, nice charger. Um, so the monkey bike was just sitting at the dealership for God knows how long. Months and months and months. I don't know. Five, six months, something like that. And I'd keep driving by it, keep looking in the window, keep seeing the little monkey, and keep thinking to myself, man, I should just buy it back. But they wanted, you know, over four grand for it. I don't remember exactly. I don't even remember what the fuck number I just told you guys like a minute ago. Um, so I went in there, checking it out, looking at the price. And I just walked up to the salesman and said, hey man. He goes, hey, how you doing? Long time no see. Because you know, it's like every time I go in there, I buy a stupid bike. <laughs> but I said to him, uh, you know, how come nobody's bought this? He said, I don't know. Been there for a while. Nice bike, blah, blah, blah. A couple people sat on it because somebody scuffed the seat. I gotta wipe that scuff off there. But I said, uh, what do you guys think about just selling it back to me for what you gave me on trade in? And that guy goes, Well, let me go let me go run the numbers and see what we can do. And he's gone for about, I don't know, two or three minutes. He comes right back, hands me a piece of paper and says, Well, it's the price we can do. And it was exactly one hundred dollars more. Tax title and all that stuff. It was a hundred dollars more out the door than what they gave me on trade for my CRF 300. It's like, well, damn, I can't beat that. I'm basically just buying my bike back for, and they're making a hundred bucks off of it. What a bunch of cool guys. So, signed the paper, grabbed my little monkey, and off I went. Brought it back home, parked it in my shed, and went back in the house feeling nice and calm, knowing that I I own my little monkey again. But let me tell you guys, the biggest reason why I regretted trading it off is because they just dumped, you know, a bunch of money into this thing. You know, putting on all the crash bars and all that stuff. And that shit ain't cheap, man. T-Rex racing stuff is not cheap. So it was just stupid of me to trade this thing in on that CRF 300. It was just dumb. You know, you guys do stuff, you, you think about it, and you think you thought it through, but you haven't really thought it through when you do it, and then later, like, instantly you regret doing it. That was one of those things. I should have just kept the damn thing. But, oh well. I got it back. I'm back on my monkey. And all is good. Right? Right. Anyways, stupid move trading this bike in on another one, even though I love that CRF 300. I really do. It's a great bike. I just, I couldn't, I couldn't live with myself. Get, having gotten rid of my monkey and I've I've always told and hell you guys probably heard it in other videos that I said I'd never I'd never sell this little bike and I did like an idiot so I bought it back didn't cost me but an extra hundred bucks you know oh well <laughs> I just love this little bike so anyways um I'm gonna get off of here I want to thank you guys for stopping by the channel and listen to me ramble on about dumb shit again but I just thought I'd get on here and tell you guys a story about this little monkey bike. Anyways, I want to thank you once again uh, for watching. Really appreciate it. Remember, if you're not already subscribed, to please hit that subscribe button and uh, hit the like. It only takes like, what, a tenth of a second to hit that like button. I know you guys are probably sick of hearing this from all of the YouTube channels, but it really does help us out. 
so anyways thanks for watching we will catch you guys on the next video hopefully it will be coming out uh more often now that the warm the weather's starting to warm up poor little gopher and uh we will see you on the next one right safe have a good day